Good morning, fans, Privateer FX. Coming at you on the Monday here. Uh, I think it's the 16th, um, 16th of Jan. The beginning of the third week of the year. Uh, terrible week last week, uh, Privateer on the trading side. On so many levels, it was terrible. Um, even though the P&L was flat, I mean actually a tiny bit up the trading was absolutely atrocious and talk about not doing what you're saying you're gonna do with consistency and also talk about uh, being stubborn uh, Euro Swiss in particular was just a stubborn stupid trade um, and why is that annoying it's not even the PL when you're stubborn, but it's also your lack of attention on other things. Because things are happening in all of these pairs, right? There's like, what do we trade here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You know, we trade 50 different things here. Um, you know, last week we made money trading stocks, which is f wildly unusual. We were, you know, we Microsoft and Apple paid. Um, but of course, even that was a shit trade because those were supposed to be investments, but we took profit on those to pay for some of the asinine fucking currency trades we did. Um, so, spent the weekend going back to basics, uh, looking at things in a more professional manner, uh, cleared the book of most of the risk. Uh, we're short bonds still. Uh, and we got a little bit of Swiss yen on, we're long Swiss yen. Um, but uh, the rest of it we cleared, uh, clear-eyed, fresh start. BOJ this week should be very, very interesting. But now let's just have a quick run through this. We'll start with the bonds. Um, you know, we bought these down 345. We missed it the first time because we were focusing on other shit but luckily we got three chances to buy this down here um, we have sold a tiny bit here so our average is now like 342 giving us room to just rebuy because you know this can easily get down to 340 and it will probably if it gets down to 340 it'll probably go through 340 a little bit so you want to give yourself some room just to, you know if you believe that the tenure cannot live down here especially if the U.S. is not going into recession. But even if it is, just debt to GDP, the long end of the curve is going to take a ball kick at some point. Um, and we want to casually play this on short bonds or long rates, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, let's just call it long rates. Um, anywhere down below 345. And we'll trade for average, and we'll try and hold this thing. Uh, for the longer term, Aussie overnight traded up to 7020, which is a bit of a shock. Um, as you can see, we had a signal at 19, but we didn't take it. Um, went to bed early last night, did not stay open for the 11 p.m. open. Here we are, it looks like it's a bit of a reject here. And this is a theme that we're looking at today. Euro also rejected. Um, we think there's going to be some resistance up at 109. So far, there has been, and it's just—it's really a theme. Um, Dollar Swiss made a new low down at uh, 92.19, back at 56. Uh, here's the thing with the Swiss franc, and last week was kind of proof to us. Uh, Euro Swiss, I, no one really knows. I had so many people ask me what the fuck was going on here. Even some guys were asking me if central banks were in. Central banks don't give a shit about Euro Swiss. Even the SMB doesn't care about Euro Swiss at parity. This is not, the alarm bells are not going off in Switzerland at parity. We've been in parity for so long. Um, what this is, is just flow, right? I mean, there's a lot of reasons people could be selling Swiss francs right now. Debt to GDP is not one of them. Strength of the economy is not one of them. But there are some psychological things that are going on in Switzerland right now which could hurt it, hurt the Swiss franc. And namely is, you know, the ski resorts, many of them are closed. Um, so this will hurt flow. This will hurt foreign tourist flow um, into Switzerland. 
and also psychologically it's quite damaging um, for the Swiss right it's part of it's part of our like natural it's our soul right skiing in the Alps and and so many of these um, resorts are closed plus you get through the 200 day moving average um, so I don't know like this looks like very similar to crypto now it looks like a buy on dip back into the 200 day so maybe you can buy some at parity buy some at 99.70 uh, and start playing euro swiss on the long side also the rate differential between euros and swiss francs looks like going to be it's going to widen terminal rate in euro is going to be around four terminal rate in swiss is going to be around two um, this is believable but also, that's also quite speculative, right? No one knows where the hell the terminal rates are going to be. And there's a million things that could change that. But anyway, this is affecting the Swiss franc. And this makes buying dollar Swiss low ones acceptable. Same as we talked about. I mean, last week we talked about buying low ones down in the 90, below 92 cents. We did not do it. There was money to be made there. We were like being a dick for a pip and trying to get like crazy super low ones. Um, but this strategy of picking up dollar Swiss somewhere below 92 cents, between 92 cents and 90, uh, does make sense, especially with Euro Swiss having turned. Cable, nothing really to do at 122.41. Uh, just chilling. You know, are we going to test uh, 124? 50? Yeah, I doubt it. But we're right in the middle of range, nothing to do. We do still like selling high ones or being short euro sterling in general. Why? Just because we're just we're just at the top of this range and, and Brexit aside and all the stupid shit that's going on in the UK. The UK is going to be fine. Um, and so we want to sell into euro sterling strength. So this kind of you know, can mean revert. Let's put up the weeklies. We don't do that too often. You can see up towards 90 is sort of the top end of this range. I mean, we do get, we do experience moves higher, but um, we're trying to sell high ones. We don't have any orders in today. Euro, Euro sterling in general. Let's go back to the dailies. Weeklies are hard to trade. Uh, Kiwi. This was a break trade overnight, 64.20. Uh, I mean, it worked as in it went straight through, no problem. But 26 was the high, and you had to leave a tight one. We obviously didn't trade it. We weren't trading the Asian session last night. But again, this rejected, right? Um, and it makes sense to me. Like, all of this dollar selling was when rates were at 343. Everything is stretched. So now things are coming back a bit. Um to be expected dollar yen as well 127.47 the low at the fix uh, we made a new low today 127.20 BOJ um, tomorrow are they going to fool around with, with policy again the analysts who I like the most are sort of arguing the answer to that is no um and I won't get into their reasoning, but I kind of also believe that they fiddled enough. Now they want to sit. Uh, they want to get this new, you know, new leadership in the BOJ settled and ready. And they also want to have a look at how the global economy is is faring going into Q1 and Q2. So we're expecting. We're looking for no change. We're not going to have a position going into this. Swiss yen, we will square at some point today. Um, we own this from Friday. It's a mean reversion trade. Um, war, a fair amount of pain there. We own this from 90. It went down to 50. Now it's at 31. We'll be selling this at 138.90 or break even because we're not going into BOJ at uh, with a with a yen position. Gold, same same uh, price action as Aussie made the new high last night. Bit of a shocker up there, 1927. 
Um, that's 50 bucks from the low last week, which was sort of 18, I don't know, 18, oh, 1870. It's 60 bucks from the low last week. Big move in gold, getting very stretchy, stretchy. Um, we are not comfortable being long gold up here. We're not going to do anything in 1915, but if we see it back up towards 1930, um, we will sell this today. Cross yen, not doing much, kind of on its knees because of dollar yen. Euro CAD, nothing. Aussie yen, nothing. Swiss yen, we, we're long this, it's fine. No drama. Aussie Swiss, um, here's a trade that we missed because we had our heads up our ass last week. Um, this was a Friday trade, worked perfectly. 65 cents, 65 centines in Aussie Swiss. Um, easy sell and took no pain shame also missed um, you know we talked about selling dollar max last week uh, through 04 missed that 30 handles I don't even want to talk about dollars R. we really hate selling dollars R anyway so this didn't work as well 88 we were talking about six six big figures lower um, anyway, if wishes were horses, then your dreams would come true. Let's look at crypto. We don't trade Bitcoin, but it's a good barometer. Shit's bid. We do trade Ethereum. We own Ethereum. We like Ethereum. We had bids at 1500 over the weekend. Did not get filled. We are adding um, to Ethereum and to Matic. Uh, Matic's been very good to us. Um, I'm not sure where we're going to add to Matic. I think, you know, we have some bids at 92 cents, but um, maybe we should be at, at $1. I don't know. Uh, but Matic and Ethereum are horses. We're long that shit. Looks like this has turned. We're not going to get too, too carried away because we do think rates can float higher. Um, but we also think the world is just going to settle into this idea that short rates at four are just where we're going to live for a couple of years, which for those of you who are older than 12 years um, or have read any pages of a history book know that this is normalcy, right? Short rates at 6% when I grew up were normal. Um, so short rates at four are not outlandish. Um, and so for all you young millennials, uh, I don't know, get the fuck older or read a history book or stop being a dumbass and like thinking that this is unusual. Um, the caveat to that obviously is 31 trillion in debt. Uh, U.S. is probably going to have to devalue its currency, uh, with this kind of with this kind of debt burden, I don't know. I mean, it's no way we're going to grow out of this debt, as in use growth and tax revenue to reduce the debt burden. Uh, this is the one caveat to four percent. But anyway, so what are we looking at specifically? You know, we're going to sell Aussie up near seventy cents. We're going to sell um, gold up near nineteen thirty. We don't see any break trades. Dollar China. Um, Dollar China, you know, if you miss this 43 level here, Dollar China might be a purchase. Um, with a tight stop, so buy Dollar China into sort of 71, 50, 40 area with a stop below 71, the figure. That might work. Uh, we're going to take it easy at the open. We've got our little CAD, uh, our little um, Swiss yen, and we've got these short 10 year bonds that we're relatively comfortable with, ready to deploy more money if uh, yields go lower in the 10 year. And so we're just sitting and chilling. Let's take a look, quick look at the calendar. Obviously, um, BOJ. Tomorrow, um, we have Bailey speaking today, 4 p.m. 
obviously it's a bank holiday in the U.S. I forgot to mention that. I think it's MLK Day. In the name of love. And then Tuesday. Uh, oh no, BOJ's Wednesday. Wednesday morning. Um, European time. So we have some time on our Swiss yen. Uh, not much going on today, U.S. holiday. We got Bailey speaking at 4 p.m. Obviously, World Economic Forum is going on. A bunch of douchebags uh, masturbating together in Davos. Um, and then we have CAD CPI tomorrow. Anyway, we're chilling here. We're going to be fading extremes uh, on the dollar pairs. And otherwise, short U.S. 10 years. All right. I'm finished. Talk to you tomorrow. Ciao.